dying from liver failure, the body's factory falling silent. It doesn't start with pain, it starts with exhaustion. The liver is the body's quiet factory, filtering toxins, processing nutrients, and keeping everything in balance. But when years of damage scar it beyond repair, from alcohol, hepatitis, or fat buildup, that factory begins to shut down. At first, the signs are easy to overlook. Fatigue that doesn't fade, appetite that disappears, a faint yellow tint in the eyes. Then confusion arrives. Fluid builds up in the belly, thoughts blur. The body slows down as toxins leak into the blood. It isn't pain that defines this stage. It's heavy, unrelenting tiredness. Doctors try to ease the pressure. Medication for swelling, diets for balance, treatments to calm the mind. But once the liver can't heal anymore, the focus changes. From trying to cure the disease to simply keeping the person comfortable. The body begins to protect itself, pulling back from the world. Hunger fades, speech quiets, and sleep deepens. In the end, most people drift gently into coma. There's no panic or struggle, just release. Hearing remains until the very last moment. So the simple words of loved ones, you're safe, we love you, still reach them. Dying from liver failure isn't a violent ending. It's the body's quiet surrender. The moment the factory closes its doors after a lifetime of work. Dying from heart failure. When the engine grows tired, it's not that the heart stops. It's that it can't keep up anymore. The heart is the engine that never rests. It beats over 100,000 times a day, pushing blood through every cell, every organ, and every thought. But after years of strain from high blood pressure, heart attacks, or simple wear, the muscle weakens. It doesn't stop suddenly. It slows. At first, there's just shortness of breath on stairs. Then it takes over. Walking across a room feels impossible. Lying flat brings suffocation. Fluid pools in the lungs and legs. The body becomes heavy and even talking feels like work. It's not a lack of will. It's the body running out of strength. For many, this stage feels like drowning from the inside. But medicine can quiet that fear. Low doses of morphine and oxygen ease the sense of air hunger. What once felt like panic turns into deep fatigue, a calm surrender. In the final days, sleep replaces conversation. The heartbeat becomes irregular, sometimes fluttering, sometimes pausing. Breathing follows the same rhythm, rising, falling, slowing. There's no sudden shock or pain, just longer pauses between breaths until one of them is the last. To the outside world, it may look like fading. From the inside, it feels like rest. The heart, after a lifetime of beating for everyone else, finally lays down its burden. Dying from kidney failure. When the filters stop working. This is one of the gentlest ways the body lets go. The kidneys work quietly, filtering blood, removing waste, and keeping every system balanced. But when they begin to fail, often after years of diabetes, high blood pressure, or chronic damage, the waste they once removed starts to build up. It doesn't hurt. It just makes everything feel slower, heavier, and duller. At first, there's swelling in the feet, fatigue, nausea, or an odd metallic taste in the mouth. Dialysis can take over the kidney's job for a while, cleaning the blood through a machine. But when that becomes too much, or when someone chooses to stop, the body begins its final shift, from survival to peace. Without dialysis, toxins gradually fill the blood. Fatigue deepens, hunger fades, and sleep takes over. There's no gasping or panic, just a slow drifting between awareness and rest. Medications calm nausea, itching, and restlessness. By the final days, most people sleep almost constantly, then slip into coma. It's quiet, predictable, and peaceful. Families often describe it as like falling into a deep, calm sleep. And that's exactly what it is. The body shutting down its filters and finally finding stillness. Dying from kidney failure is not a defeat. It's the body saying, you've done enough and then gently letting go. Dying from lung failure when every breath becomes work. Everyone fears suffocating, but that's not what this feels like. Lungs are the bridge between body and world. They draw in air, trade oxygen for carbon dioxide, and keep every cell alive. But when they begin to fail, through COPD, pulmonary fibrosis, or emphysema, 
that bridge starts to crumble. At first, breathlessness comes only with exertion. Then it follows you everywhere, walking, eating, and talking. Eventually, even resting feels like running uphill. You breathe faster, shallower, but never feel satisfied. To the outside world, it looks terrifying. But the mind doesn't experience it that way, not with help. Small doses of morphine ease the panic, tricking the brain's alarm into quiet. The sense of I can't breathe softens into simple tiredness. Most describe it not as suffocation, but as drifting, the body too tired to fight for air. In the last days, speech fades, movements slow, the breathing pattern changes, long pauses, then deep sighs, then quiet again. Eventually, one of those pauses becomes permanent. No struggle, no gasping, just a final release of air, the last breath leaving calmly. Dying from lung failure isn't like drowning. It's more like floating away, the body's last breath turning into peace. Dying from progressive brain failure, when the mind forgets how to live. This isn't the body giving up. It's the brain quietly letting go. Brain failure isn't sudden. It unfolds slowly, piece by piece, as the command center begins to fade. It happens in advanced dementia, severe strokes, brain injuries, or degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. At first, it's just forgetfulness. Names, places, familiar faces. Then it becomes silence. The brain forgets how to speak, how to walk, how to eat, until it finally forgets how to live. To families, it feels like a long goodbye. But to the person, it's different. The circuits that carry pain and fear have already gone quiet. They're not trapped or suffering. They're drifting in a soft space between awareness and rest. The body follows the mind's retreat. Hunger fades, thirst fades. The brain stops sending signals to swallow or breathe as strongly. Breathing becomes shallow, sometimes with long pauses. Hands cool, the pulse slows, and the eyes often open. Stop seeing the world around them. It isn't distressing. It's quiet, natural, and mercifully calm. The person doesn't know they're dying. They've already moved past fear. For families, it's painful to watch the slow dimming of someone who once filled the room with life. But this kind of death gives time. Time to sit, to speak softly, to love them gently to the end. Dying from brain failure isn't a sudden stop. It's a slow fading of light. The mind, after years of holding everything together, finally resting in silence, dying from multi-organ failure, when the body stops fighting. Sometimes the body doesn't die from one thing, it dies from everything all at once. Multi-organ failure is the body's final cascade, a chain reaction where one system fails and pulls the others down with it. It usually begins with something severe, an overwhelming infection, major trauma, or cardiac arrest. At first, machines and medicine can keep things going, but each fix comes at a cost. Blood is shunted to vital organs, starving the rest. Soon the kidneys shut down, the liver floods with toxins, the lungs fill with fluid, and the heart begins to tire. Most people at this stage are unconscious or heavily sedated. They don't feel pain, fear, or panic. What looks like struggle from the outside, the tubes, the monitors, the rise and fall of the chest, feels like nothing on the inside. The mind is distant, shielded by medication and the body's own chemistry. Families stand by, watching machines breathe and pump for the person they love. It feels endless, waiting for permission to stop. When that time comes, doctors withdraw the supports gently, ensuring comfort. Breathing slows, the heart follows. There's no gasp or shock, just quiet. Multi-organ failure isn't a dramatic collapse. It's a release after the longest fight imaginable. The body, after giving everything it had, finally says, enough. Subscribe and learn what the body and mind go through in those moments. Most people fear, but few truly understand. Not to be morbid, but to be human. Because knowing how we die teaches us how to live.